this is something that will inspire, will grow into something more. I think it's the chance to reconnect the people to the land. I think it's the, the chance to uh, make people aware of uh, we have places that can manage water but be a beautiful garden. The narrative in New Orleans is that we're gonna, it's a default to, that we would turn our city into water gardens. It's not a default. I mean, not the whole city, that. But I think that we see it as a negative condition when it's a positive condition. But I, I think especially the, 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 the healing of the earth, the ability to let the earth work with us and for us to live with it. And it's how do you use the, the engineered man-made systems and the natural systems and make this a better, uh, make this a better city? an order of modest nuns to take this on and say, we'll do our part. Here was our home. How can you use our home to be an inspiration to others? It's, it's an inspiration to me and a lot of others. Maybe it's an act of faith. The sisters put faith in me and I and them and we and one another. And then in, in this case, the city and the federal government's involved in this because of FEMA funds. And, so in a way, it's faith in a fragile system. But I think I poured it in because they had faith in me. Well, we've messed with the climate. I mean, I think the the ways we classify rainfall don't make sense. It's raining harder. It isn't raining harder than it rained in 95, and was it May or June when it rained 18 inches or whatever? But it's raining more often, and that cloud is, is more threatening. Um, but why we worry is because we don't know how to manage this. Uh, we, we haven't prioritized managing water as fundamental to life here. We thought transportation was more valuable. We don't have our priorities right. Our values may be okay, that we like our life. The priority has to be water. If you live with the lake, which is really the gulf, and that river right on either side of you, and you want to stand, if you want to be in Gentilly and banish water to maybe a distant canal that you can't find there's some pipes underneath here, you got a problem. So, you know, the sins of the past are the errors of the forebear. And then the challenge of our changing climate, it's all compounding here. There are not enough of us to really pay for it. So we're gonna have to work together, make this a priority, understand the roles that we each play in our yards. The inspiration of this project is 25 acres. It's pretty big. The downtown development district in New Orleans, which is the you know the area of the Superdome and all the everything from the you know all the, from the river, that's only 40 acres. So this is a pretty big property. Well, it's obviously got a lot of green. It's not so hard to manage water here. It's harder once you've paved it. But I think if people can learn that it's possible and they can have hope, you know, I think that's what we need. This this provides hope. And I hope that the uh, the trees are healthy. Um, these trees, I hope the volunteer trees in the back, the Chinese towel aren't here. I hope that the water, when it rains, uh, comes up onto the site and flows across it, and people can enjoy the fact that that rain and that water is nurturing the site. I hope the trees are growing in the back, the cypresses. Uh, I hope that they're on this high ground where the sisters used to inhabit. There's a, a, a pavilion or two or three that people can inhabit and have educational opportunities and environmental opportunities or chances to reflect. Five years is enough time for it to be done. My curse is always to want more. My hope is that I can appreciate that achievement. Um, my hope is, we, but we have way to go to get there. There will be more work to be done. This has been a long, hard demonstration project. This right. is not the answer to all the flooding problems in Gentilly. But I hope that other things are in process. The, there's much work to be done on Earth, but I hope also that I'm wise enough to reflect on something dumb.